These flicks will get your blood pumping without you even having to leave the couch. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 most intense movies you can watch on Netflix. For this list, we're looking at movies currently streaming on Netflix that will keep you on the edge of your seat. Number 10, Burning. This South Korean drama is a slow burn, no pun intended, although that's part of what makes the results so fulfilling. The film centers on an aspiring writer, the woman of his dreams, her mysterious friend, and an elusive cat. For most of its runtime, the audience isn't entirely sure what Burning is working towards, but director Lee Chang Dong keeps us hooked with quiet suspense that shows rather than tells. This is a mystery that spoons out information, and once we start connecting all the dots, it's chills all the way. Based on its first act, the film's conclusion isn't at all what one would expect. It all lines up from a narrative standpoint, though, even if you are left with some burning questions. Number 9, Ex Machina. Do you like Mozart? I like Depeche Mode. Do you like Nathan? Yes, of course. Is Nathan your friend? My friend? I, yeah, I hope so. A good friend. Ex Machina blurs the lines between artificial intelligence and humanity, not unlike 2001 or Blade Runner. Whereas those were large-scale productions, however, Alex Garland's directorial debut has the intimacy of a stage play, resulting in a claustrophobic mind game. The plot revolves around a curious programmer, an eccentric CEO, and a seductive android named Ava. Much like the film itself, Ava is hard to get an exact read on at first. Is she technology's greatest breakthrough or its most dire mistake? When you make a new model, what do you do with the old one? Well, I, uh... Download the mind, unpack the data, add in the new routines I've been writing. And to do that, you end up partially formatting so the memories go. Ex Machina leaves you guessing from start to finish, playing out like a tense chess match. Even when two people are merely having a conversation in a room, we feel the dread rising as one prepares to make the other their pawn. Caleb, you have to help me. I'm going to. We're getting out of here tonight. Number eight, hell or high water. All you're guilty of right now is being stupid. Just leave and that's all it'll be. Tell me I'm stupid again. This Western crime thriller warrants comparisons to No Country for Old Men, although there's no Anton Chigurh in this scenario. Every character, while not necessarily justified in their actions, has an identifiable motivation. The story follows two bank robbing brothers and the Texas Rangers hot on their trail. It's a game of cat and mouse, but that doesn't mean there are any heroes and villains. We empathize with each person involved, even if it's evident from the get-go that there won't be a win-win resolution. Ah! What'd I tell you? Yeah. Ah! And therein lies the nail-biting nature of David McKenzie's film. It's like watching two objects speeding towards each other. It's going to end badly for at least one party, but that doesn't make it any easier when the two objects finally collide. You can shoot me now and be with you in your rights. You toting a gun and all, how convenient. I figure you got one too. Number seven, Train to Pusan. Just when you thought zombie movies had been exhausted to death, Train to Pusan injects new life into the genre. What's the reason? The best way to describe this South Korean film is Dawn of the Dead meets the taking of Pelham 123. Zombies on a train is a simple enough premise, but the way director Young Sang Ho executes it makes for one of the all time greats. <laughs> the characters here aren't just stock archetypes for the undead to sink their teeth into. We come to genuinely care about these people, and our hearts sink when everyone meets their end. <laughs> The action is pulse-pounding, the performances are excellent, and the social commentary rings especially true in a world where quarantine is becoming part of the everyday lingo. Number 6, The Gift. 
On a routine shopping trip, a man named Simon bumps into an old high school acquaintance, Gordo. Gordo? Hey. Wow, buddy, I did not recognize you. Gordon Mosley. This awkward encounter plants the seeds of a one-sided friendship as Gordo injects himself into the lives of Simon and his wife. While Gordo comes off as well-intentioned, he's not what he seems. Just to say that the, the, the bad things, they can be a gift. Absolutely. And that's just the way I like to see things. The gift has the calling card of a traditional stalker thriller, although the outcome isn't exactly what the audience anticipates. The film evolves into something far more complex and disturbing, touching upon bullying, misplaced trust, and the past coming back to haunt people. You fantasize about all those girls back in high school that treated you like shit, just lining up all of a sudden saying, hey, Robin, we're so sorry about how we treated you. That's great. You're a bully. It's a layered guessing game elevated by great performances from Jason Bateman, Rebecca Hall, and Joel Edgerton, who wrote and directed the film as well. Open the box if you dare. Number 5. Hush Hush starts off with a familiar setup. An intruder terrorizes a woman who lives alone in her remote house. What adds another level of panic and unpredictability to the equation is that our heroine is a deaf mute. Seeing no evil is one thing, but hearing no evil is equally unsettling. Hush thus relies less on dialogue and more on visual storytelling. The film is carried by a spine-chilling score, heart-pounding sound design, and a charismatic lead performance from Kate Siegel. At the forefront is director Mike Flanagan, who makes the most of a limited space and a basic idea, turning in a modern masterstroke of slasher horror. Number 4. Good Time you could, Did you guys have done that without you standing next to me being strong? No. Are you feeling this? Are you feeling the I'm feeling right now? The Safdie brothers know how to immerse audiences in a constant state of alarm, as demonstrated in this robbery gone wrong thriller. Robert Pattinson gives one of his most breathtaking performances as Connie, a lowlife who needs to come up with 10 grand fast to bail out his brother. That money stays in the safe. That's mine. You get the other 10, I get your brother out. What starts out as an already desperate situation snowballs into a marathon of mayhem, with a new obstacle confronting Connie around every turn. The editing, music, and cinematography further contribute to the paranoia, making the audience feel every ounce of anxiety running through Connie's body. The film's like watching a rat in a maze, except there is no exit. Regardless, the rat will keep looking for the cheese until the walls around him collapse. You don't know what I'm talking about at all. Number 3. Snowpiercer Pong Joon-ho's profile has risen massively in recent years, and Snowpiercer remains among his most electrifying works. Of all the sci-fi films that have explored the clear and present danger of climate change, this is by far the most provocative, exciting, and harrowing. This is it. Curtis, come on. We're out of time, buddy. You gotta do it now. Set against a post-apocalyptic Ice Age backdrop, Chris Evans leads a group of lower-class rebels across a train carrying what's left of humanity. With each compartment they power through, our heroes take one step closer towards the earth-shattering truth. My friend, you suffer from the misplaced optimism of the doomed. This is going to be good. Snowpiercer possesses echoes of other sci-fi classics, while also being an utterly unique entity. The film is only made more hair-raising when you consider its real-world parallels concerning the environment, classism, and corruption. Curtis, dear boy, the fact is we are all stuck inside this blasted train. We are all prisoners in this hunk of metal. Medium rare. Number 2. Uncut Gems The Safties Strike Again Released two years after Good Time, Uncut Gems is not only a nail-biting and critically acclaimed crime flick, it's also a welcome reminder that Adam Sandler's acting chops extend beyond comedy. Let's see what Vegas, what has Vegas got you guys at tonight? Take a look, let's see. Are you, are you serious? You're gonna pull this up right here? Look at this shit. The Sixers are supposed to win the game tonight, they think. We don't keep track of none of that shit. Who they think a game seven, you're not gonna get 18 points. Playing the dramatic role of Howard Ratner, a New York City jeweler with huge gambling debts, Sandler's standout performance earned him dozens of accolades. Is Ratner's dedication to making all the wrong moves in the face of seemingly impossible odds inspiring? Just plain dumb or both? Honestly, it's hard to say. Hey, hey, what's happening right now? This I told you how things were gonna go if you didn't start to behave. What? How was I not behaving? Explain to me, I I'm sorry. I think I was very explicit on the phone about how things were gonna go. Though the film's out-of-this-world cinematography and the Safdie's mastery of anxiety-inducing cinema, as one critic put it, may leave you breathless by the end. It'll be in a good way. Come on, Kate! Shoot it! Shoot it! Oh! 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 I think we're all in the mood for a little escapism right now. 
For some of us, that means mindless reality fluff. For others, maybe a rom-com. And for some of us, it's really intense psychological thrillers or action movies. Hey, whatever helps take your mind off your current problems. Number one is a classic we all should have seen by now. And if you haven't, it is a great opportunity to check it out. Don't forget it's a movie, okay? Let's look at some honorable mentions, and then we'll see the most intense movie you can watch on Netflix right now. We sit and we wait. And we die. Not if you sit and you wait. Will, you do not want to go this Let's way. Let's go, Kira. We're leaving right now. No, 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 we are leaving now. Can I see you? I really want to see you. Yes, it's exactly what you think. Just like you killed a member of my family, now you got to kill a member of your family to balance things out. Understand? You, you hate me. And all I ever did was believe in you. You know what you did to me. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Taxi Driver Unlike some other movies on this list, this Martin Scorsese masterpiece needs no introduction. You talking to me? You talking to me? Taxi Driver never loses its impact, no matter how many times you rewatch it. Thank God for the rain, which has helped wash away the garbage and the trash off the sidewalks. I'm working long hours now, six in the afternoon to six in the morning, sometimes even eight in the morning, six days a week, sometimes seven days a week. It's a long hustle, but it keeps me real busy. If you haven't seen it before, then you're missing out on one of the most intense and influential pieces of cinema of all time. When we think of ticking time bombs, a character who immediately comes to mind is Travis Bickle, played by the immortal Robert De Niro. I just want to go out. I really, you know, I really want to, I got some bad ideas in my head. I just can't. It's not a matter of if, but when this unstable taxi driver will go off. The real question is, who will get caught in the crossfire, leaving us to wonder if we should fear Travis or root for him? This ain't an easy ride. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.